In today's episode, you're going to get to see one unique Chevy Suburban. Hello everybody, welcome to Classic Car Chit Chat. My name is Kevin. If this is the first time you're coming to my channel, then welcome. I really appreciate you being here. If you've been to my channel before, then welcome back. As always, I truly appreciate the comments that you leave for me, for giving me a thumbs up, for subscribing to my channel, as well as hitting that notification bell so you know when the next episode is available. Today, you are going to meet a gentleman by the name of Harry. He has been working on this project car of his. It is a 1989 Chevy Suburban, but it is unlike any Suburban you've ever seen before. It is scary. I'm standing here in front of the construction site at Aaron Mills Town Center. It seems to be sort of the apt place where you might see something like this in the middle of the night. It's got an air ride system that he's installed that makes this thing go up and down. And if this truck was in your rear view mirror, trust me, it would scare you. So without further ado, let's hop in, let's go for a drive and let's check out this incredible Chevy Suburban. Look at this thing. Wow. <laughs> Harry, I gotta say, man, this is one scary looking truck. Tell me what it is. How you doing? My name is Harry Holdenreed. I've got a 1989 Chevy Suburban. I've got airbags on all four corners. Work in progress. Going to take a little bit longer and it should be all done and on the market. Oh, you're trying to sell it. Okay, maybe we'll find a buyer on this. Well, we're, we're not down. trying to, but if you got the money, you can have it. Okay, it's one of those. All right. So why the Suburban? It's different. It, it, it comes down to... If you want, you want to stand out, you have to have something different than the rest of the crowd has. That's why the Suburban. You're absolutely the right shape. there. It's very uh, universal. It's uh, a very useful vehicle. You can use it to go camping. You can use it to haul stuff around. You can use it to sleep in the back when you're out. It's an all-purpose vehicle. But is it all stock? Like, what, what have you added to it? No, what I've added doing? air suspension to it. I've added a aftermarket heating and air conditioning. Uh, rebuilt motor, rebuilt transmission. The rear frame has been cut up. Changed the bumpers. We're Harry, doing a few other changes over the winter time now. I can't get over the size of this thing. Uh, it's not that big. It is. Com compared to my little MG, I can probably fit right behind it. <laughs> wow. Look at this thing. So how long have you had it then? I've had this truck 20 years now. 20 years? 20 years. Wow. And you've been kind of playing with it like a little it's, bit at a time? It's been or? an on and off project. You have to remember, your family comes first. Yeah. Family's always first, so the project gets put on the back burner. <laughs> that is quite something. What about the rims here? Like, what the heck is that? It's, it's a stock rim with no. a very old school uh, dish hubcap. Really? Yep. These were, these were very popular back in the, in the 40s and the 50s, especially on the old school hot rods. I've never seen one like that before. This is the first time. I'm actually amazed that these were actually stock options that you could have bought, bought well, back in the day. They're, they're not an option for the vehicle. Okay. These were, these, I found these on, uh, on Facebook. Right. Right. The guy had them for sale, and as soon as I saw them, I jumped right on them. <laughs> it's like, I got to have them. When can I pick them up? They're the rare find, yeah. And everybody tells me they make the vehicle. They do. They do. There's just this is meanness to this. Like, it's, I don't know how to describe it. Like, you look at this, and you've got, like, fear. Like, as you're even approaching me, it's like, bloody hell. This is something else. What about the, uh, the side mirror there? Is that... Stock Those or is that aftermarket? Okay. Aftermarket. Hard to see out of them. I bet. Very hard to see out of them. You have to move a little bit in order to see what's behind you. 
And in terms of uh, the uh, the roof line there, that little hump there, that's that's again, all that's stock all factory. That's the way they came. All the body, the body is stock factory right now. It's all the insides and underneath that's been all all modified. Right. So did you kind of grow up, Harry, thinking, oh, I'm going to get myself one of those? Because you said you had an MG at one point. Uh, I've, had an M I've had a couple MGs, and I've had more cars than I care to think about. What was your first car you ever bought? Um, my very first car before my license or when I got my license? Both. How's that? Um, wow. That's kind of hard to remember. It's You're been so long now. For crying out loud. It's Come been on. so long. Uh, before the license, there were several. There was a Rambler wagon, a couple of MGs, uh, Viva Vauxhall. Really? A Vauxhall? Oh, yeah. Austin American. I don't even know what that is, Harry. An Austin American. My, my first licensed car on the road was a 69 Dodge Dart GTX. Okay. That was my first car on the road that, that I started driving with. All right. So, look. When I look in the back here, what is this? What is all this? The back under the box is the gas tank. And this, like... That's the, 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 the wheel arch to cover all the wheel opening where it's all been cut up. The whole floor has basically been cut out of that back section. So can I open the back door to see... Uh, let me unlock it. So the original Suburbans would have been like what? Like a complete flat? Or <laughs> is, is there a, a trick to doing this or you just got to pull hard? Oh, you, <laughs> what could make me feel bad? Push and pull. All right. So the original Suburban, so that would have been flat? Yep. That would have been flat and this one would have had the, um, the third bench seat option in it. Really? Okay. So now you've got rid of it all. Yeah. And what is this thing here? That's the uh, air compressors with the air tank in order for the air for the air ride suspension. And what exactly is the air ride suspension? The air ride suspension is to to raise and lower the vehicle to to your suitable driving habits or your comfort range that you really want going down the road. That's impressive. And when you go into shopping malls, when you go over the speed bumps, you can go a little higher and go over the speed bumps with no problem. And you installed this in yourself? Yeah, most of the work was done by me and my son. Good for you. So it's like a, a family project. Right? Yep. Uh, and I notice here, here, let me try this again. Yeah, that's a homemade center council. Wow. The other one, the original one, is just a little shoebox. So we decided to go make something out of our own. And we're actually going to be changing that one up again over the winter time. My Lord. And this is quite the interesting dash you got going here. Yeah, the cover's missing off it right now. That's at home on the shelf. <laughs> we have brand new one for that. This is definitely a one of a kind kind of car. As I said, it's a work in progress. And it's only taken you 20 years to get this point. Well, so. it's it hasn't really been the 20. I started about maybe 10. And it's been an on and off thing. Sometimes you're waiting for parts. Sometimes you're waiting to get it in somewhere right. to get some work done to it. I'm going to... Uh, go from the other end. Most of the winter times it spends uh, sitting in the parking lot. Right. So you kind of get to it when you can, when you have the time to do it. So what's next on your sort of agenda in terms of what you want to do to this car? Well, we're going back to, to the stock dash, stock dash assembly. Uh, Center Council, like I said, we're making another one. And then we're just going to do redo the rest of the interior. And I'm assuming these, uh, all these controls here are for that's the, air the ride. That's the air ride control. Okay. How big is the engine on this thing? It's got to be a big V8. Small V8. Really? Yep. For something this big. Well, you could you could have optioned back in the day for the bigger one, but whoever bought this one optioned for the smaller V8, 5.7 liter. Oh my God, there's a lot of space here. No, oh, there's a lot of things missing. <laughs> wow. And um, you have all the inner fender missing. You have all the fender missing. What, what exactly? That's is the it? overflow for the radiator right so now. It just collects it in a little jug. 
It, it collects a little bit. It's just there as a safety precaution. My Lord, this is quite something. It's even scarier when you open the bonnet up like <laughs> this. Good Lord. Harry, this is a thing of beauty. Over the winter, it'll be all nicely freshened up and nicely painted underneath there. So what we should do then, we should do an after. Like this is the before, and we'll do an after to see what changes you've made. Well, you'll, you'll be surprised when you see it when it comes back again. Wow. Like literally, you will be surprised. Oh, I can't wait. And are you going to keep it black? Is that the yep. idea? It'll stay the flat black. Very cool. Which gives it an even scarier look. Right? Yeah, because it'll be all even and it'll be a darker flat black. Okay. The flat black will be like what's on the driver's door right now. Right, right. It'll be the whole truck like that. I love it. This is quite the truck. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is the head turner. What is the, uh, what is the license the airbags, plate? Right? What does that mean? Look at it. All bagged <laughs> out. <laughs> took me a while, but yes, I get it now. It took us a while to come up with that one. Very good. Very good. That is unique in itself. But now, now I'm contemplating changing that too. What are you going to change it to? Uh, can scrape. Okay. Can drag. Because I can, I'm, once I do take the spacer out of the back end, we can actually put the back bumper right on the ground. That far low. That low. So, okay, I got to ask you then. You got to show me what it does now. I am so excited. You hear that nice tinny sound, I right? I do, yes. You pay extra for that. <laughs> There's her on the ground. It's kind of a low rider. Very low. At this low, you cannot drive it. Right. The front cross member is on the floor right now. Let me have a closer look at that. It's hard to even get down there. Hang on. I can't do it. Wow. It does make it look really cool though when it's like that. Now you can also see why half of the all the inner stuff is all missing <laughs> on the fenders. <laughs> so you can get this low. Wow. And then when it goes up, how high does it go? It goes high enough that I can turn lock to lock. So I don't have to worry about MTO. Okay. You gotta see how close the back end is to the ground. Right height. That's something else, Harry. That is quite something. When it goes low like that, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. So when you see cars that jump, how do they create that? I you can turn her off if you want. I got compressors on. Oh, okay. How do what? You know when they jump, like you get the front end jumping up and down? That, that's is hydraulic. That so do they use you that can, in combination? You can do it with air, but it's a, it's a different setup. You run larger airline, you run a different set of bags. Okay. And when they do the, the, the hopping with the air, yeah. they're running off of a, a secondary air supply. Just to allow So it. they have more air pressure constantly yep. versus this is limited to how, how much you can use at one time, right? But they, when they do the hopping, they do it off a secondary air system and you can hop like the hydraulics do. It's fun to watch. Yes, it is. It's a lot of fun watching them do it on air. The air has come a long way from when it first started, because when it first started, you couldn't do any air hopping. 
right? It was just you put it in, you go up and down, and you're done. And that's it. Yeah. But over the years, they've graduated, and they said, okay, we want to do what they do. So they came up with ways on how to figure it out. Incredible. I've seen air hoppers go six feet in the air. Now, are you planning to do that to the no. truck? So no. this is just going to be a smooth up and down? To in, the... in order to hop, you have to do frame reinforcement. Okay. You're laying quarter-inch steel all the way around the whole frame. Just to give it that rigidity to be able yeah. to do that. Because otherwise, you start hopping like this, you bounce twice, and the frame just bends in half. And then you have no more vehicle. Right. But you do this in your garage with your son? Outside, Outside. parking lot. Wow. It's a labor of love. It definitely is. How many man hours would you say you've spent between yourself and your son kind of working on this project? I probably got 2,000 in it already. Wow. And then probably another three, 400 from other places doing some extra work for me. Yeah. It's something else, Harry. Right? I swear, like you look at this thing and there's one scary looking, the front grill, like this is <laughs> not original on a Safari. No, that's an aftermarket grill. And there's a few other modifications in order for it to, to sit flush. I love it. It just gives it that really clean, scary yeah. look as well. And it's actually got four sets of lamps there. Or no, two at the top. And then these. Those are the signal and the marker light. light. Okay. But unfortunately, you can't see those right now. They have uh, the bow tie symbol on them. What does that the, mean? The Chevrolet symbol. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right, you think we'd have to take so it in the dark area to do so that? Would that have been from here, and you kind of moved it over? Is that the same, the same lamps? They would have been on the side. No, that, that's a whole different light there on the side. Oh, okay. We're gonna we're covering that up. We're not we're not putting that in. Right. We have um, we have different ones that we're gonna put right here on the side of the bumper. Oh, that look amazing. Just a little one. You put a little hole in the bumper. Yeah. You put the light in, and that way it'll light up on the side. That would look so clean. Like you said, it's a labor of love. It's it's a passion. If if you're not going to enjoy what you're doing, don't don't even start doing it. Yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And it doesn't happen overnight. No. It takes time and money and patience, and you got to keep doing it. Bumpers are off for later year. Okay, front and back. Yep. The bumpers, the bumpers make the make the truck give it a different appearance for a different year. Oh, okay. So what would they have been off of this style of bumper? Uh, '86. Okay. The '89 has the plastic strip going through it. Right. On the front and the rear. This but you go back, you long. go back a year, it, it cleans it up. Okay. It looks really, really cool. I remember the first time I saw this was at the uh, Lakeshore. Port Credit one, yeah. Yep. And it's like, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> it's just unbelievable. I still can't get over it. And then it's going to be black, black tinted glass and everything else. Yep. Just the whole oh, thing is blacked out. Really dark tinted glass. Okay. Really dark. Amazing. Now in the rear there, does that slide, is that an automatic? Or yeah, the, the window the, the window motor is broken now, so okay. the window's out right now. But that's going to be one of the changes that we're going to be doing over the winter time. Like replacing it, like putting in a brand new. Well, I don't want to get into okay. all the you, detail. You have, you have plans on right? this, and all right, we'll have to wait. That, and see. That's part of the surprise for the springtime, okay, right? Okay. This is something else, Harry. So, what does it drive like? Should we go for a little spin? We can go for a spin. So, so now I understand why, Harry, when I asked you, whatever you do, don't put any music on because YouTube doesn't like it. There is no music. <laughs> <laughs> so now, right now, it sits at max height. Okay. Okay? That's going to be a really stiff, raunchy ride. Man, you gotta love doing that just to scare the kids, surely. Tell me you haven't done it. You have, I know you have. You can even tell. my wife, even my wife jumps when I let the air out. Okay, my grandkids. It's like, okay, I'm gonna air out. Yeah, okay. As soon as I hit the button, it's like It's like what the hell just happened?
Did you always want to install an air ride system here? Yeah, I've been I've been playing with suspension height for over 30 years now. Okay. Right? And when this when this all come about, it's like, yeah, okay, this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> that is something else. So why are there so many controls? Like, what is that, two front? The middle one yep. controls both at the same time. Got it. Right side, left side. This one controls all four at the same time. Yeah, the same in the rear. Both the rear at the same time, right and left. Interesting. The engine's got a good sound to it though. You really do hear it. That is cool. One of a kind. And I'm gonna assume it's premium unleaded for this thing? I run mid-grade. Do you? Okay. And no problems? No problems. I have custom exhaust work done on it. And when you look underneath when it's up in the air, you will not see nothing below the frame. It's a complete clean look. Everything sits up in between the frame. That's amazing. And the exhaust tips, they exit just before the back bumper. Okay. So just like the front end is flush and clean, the rear end is exactly yep. the same. So basically, when you're playing with these controls, it's not like a gauge that tells you up a little bit or if it's equal, it's no. just by feel. It's just by feel and by look. Got it. Because right now you can feel the ride's not bad, it's nice and cushy. Yeah. Right? So now we're going to go like this. Now you can feel it's a lot, it's, it's stiffer. Yep. Right? Yeah, noticeably. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't have that. It's actually a really nice ride though. So this noise is always on when that compressor is playing? Pardon? That noise is always on when the compressor is no, kind of... No, only when I use it. Okay. And you can turn left in the street here. So what is that noise in the back now? That's the, um, the two pieces of metal. Oh. Bouncing off one another. <laughs> I love it. And back here, yeah. So now we'll go soft again. Anytime. You don't have to be stationary, you don't have to be okay. I can I can change on the fly. Alright. It has the option when I start the vehicle up, it'll raise. Yep. Then when I shut it off, it'll lower down. Okay. So once we're all said and done playing with it, we'll incorporate that option into it. If you start it up, it'll come up on uh, ready for you, shut it off and it'll go down into park mode. It's like the Citroens back in the day when you started them up, they kind of raised to yeah. the drive height. Yeah. I knew somebody had one of those. That, that is the coolest car. I mean, I'd love to see one here in Canada. I know in Europe they had a whole bunch. But the first time you see that happening, you think, what the hell is that? Yeah. It is the coolest deal. I knew that car like 40, 40, 50 years ago. Right. And you're kind of recreating that feel on a Suburban. What was the last year they actually stopped making these? Pardon? What was the last year they stopped making these? This style? Yeah. 
92. Okay. This style square body was made from 73 right up to 92. With only the minor changes with the front bumpers yep. and things front like bumper, that. Front bumper, the front grill assembly. Right. Um, and interior packaging was changed. This one had the, what they call the Silverado package. Wall-to-wall -wall broadloom, broadloom on the door panels. Oh, okay. So all the creature comforts then? Oh, all of them. Now this thing doesn't have AC or anything, does it? Yeah, no, it's not, it does, but it's not hooked up right now. Got it. The aftermarket heating and air system does have the option to put it in. Is that something you're, you're planning to do in the final version? Oh, we're putting it in. All right. But with what's going on right now, yeah. it's it's not at the point where I, I'm going to worry about doing it. Yeah. She's beautiful, though, Harry. Very, very cool and very unique. One of a kind. Thank you very much. That it is. Like, is there a big following in uh, across North America for Suburbans? This, this one goes all the way across to the I, Netherlands. I, I, wish you, I wish you warned me when you do that, because it kind of does the shit out of you. <laughs> I have people in the Netherlands that, ha that have seen this. No way. Yep. Oh my God, I just realized when you step out, how low it is now. <laughs> oh my God. It's like stepping out my MG. Wow. Harry, what can I say, man? This is something else. Totally. One unique ride. Yeah, definitely a labor of love. I like the looks that it gets, the thumbs up I get. Yeah. I had a guy who was going to um, Burrito Boys on Friday night. Which one? Here and the one in Street? The one in Pine Valley and uh, Highway 7 in Woodbridge. Okay. And uh, the guy pulled up beside me. He's got phone in hand. He says, do you mind? <laughs> I said, no, go right ahead. And then he comes up the right side of my truck. He's taking a video of it. Oh, my Lord. That is one unique vehicle. Um, he promises that around this time next year, the truck will be ready and transformed into something different. And he's going to promise me again that he put him there and it's a work in project, sorry, 